the premise of the movie kind of stuck with me for, for the longest time. I, I had this idea for since I was in film school seven years ago, and it stems from when I was a kid and I was obsessed with Hansel and Gretel, and I I, I had the fairy tale and a little cassette tape that I listened to at, at my bed, and where they of course reenacted the whole thing, and I just still remember the the dying witch's screams as she claws on the inside of the oven, and it really stuck with me because it's it's dark and twisted stuff. So later when I started thinking about it, you know, it just felt like a natural progression. What happened to them? Where did they go? What, what would that event do to them? And it just felt natural that they would become uh, witch hunters. When the studio invited me over to start casting the film, uh, I actually saw the Hurt Locker on the plane over. Uh, and when I landed, that was, I just, we have to get Jeremy Renner. That was my first thing I said to the producers. Um, and we gave him the script, he loved it. And, we got him on board really early, actually. Um, so then it was about finding Gretel. Uh, and I saw a movie, a tiny movie from England called The Disappearance of Alice Creed, which Gemma stars in, and she was just amazing in that film. But of course, when you're casting a brother and sister relationship, it's about chemistry. You know, you got to make sure that they click and, you know, it feels natural. So that was, of, of course, key. But as soon as they met, they clicked straight away and we knew we had a, a good combination. The visual style is, is I, I'm a big fan of getting things in camera. I mean, I come from Norway where we have limited resources uh, when we're shooting films, so I, I brought that, of course, into this. And when you're shooting a movie about trolls and witches and fairy tales, it's important that it, you ground it somehow. And you, you try to ground it to action and we try to ground it to making the witches look real and we use makeup and we use, the troll, we have a troll in the movie who's not CGI, but he's animatronic, which uh, it was basically a guy controlling the, the troll suit and four, five guys controlling his face on remote controls. So again, I think it's it makes the difference it's such a big difference in the movie that you can actually feel it. It feels real in this fantastic world. So that that was the concept. The big adversary in the film is is a witch called Muriel, um, and she she's played by Famke Johnson, and and she's kind of a, a shadowy figure. She's somehow connected to what happened to them as children, but it's not clear exactly what, and also that she she needs. Hansel and Gretel for something, but but it's, she's kind of lear learning in the shadows there. And, and for me, Famke, after I, I mean, I had a crush on Famke since I saw her in Goldeneye, where she was an amazing villain. Uh, and and she has a physical presence as well. She's tall, you know, she's huge. Uh, and and she, she just pulled it off uh, so well. And it's a, it's a tough character to pull off, you know. She, you, you know, it's easy to go, to go too far in those kind of big roles, but she just, she got the balance perfect, I think. If you're a witch hunter, it's important to have a lot of good tools hunting witches, of course. Uh, so that was actually a lot of fun coming up with all those different gadgets. I, know, I knew I wanted Hansel to have a, this, a basic version of a pump action shotgun and Gretel to have a more elegant weapon, her crossbow, double barrel, I mean, double action crossbow. Uh, but other than that, you know, they have plenty of tools. They have witch wire that they put up in between trees. They have grenades. They have an old fashioned Gatling gun. Um, and they have a fold-out rifle with super... I mean, it's just a lot of fun coming out of that stuff. And, 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 and when you're doing a movie like this, there's actually there's no limits where you can go. The candy house was the thing we spent the most time designing and trying to get right. Because that's the thing from the story that everybody remembers. You know, and some, in, in some places it's called a gingerbread house. I mean, I, I guess that's the most common description of it, but we, we try to go bigger. We try to make it as yummy as we could, I guess. Because if you're a kid and you see a house made of candy in the middle of the forest, uh, it's something is, you know, it should, it, 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 it's something is strange there. But that was the, so it was important to get it just to make it feel as yummy as possible. This movie is packed with action, there's no doubt about that. And, and, and uh, again, I, I wanted to get as much as I could in, in camera. And of course, they had Jeremy he, at this time, you know, he just came off Mission 4 and he's done tons of training for that. And, and so he didn't need that much preparation. Gemma, she spent a lot of time with the stunt coordinators. It's, it's so important in these movies that they look natural doing this stuff. I mean, these guys have been doing this whole life, so it, they shouldn't flinch at any seconds. So that was kind of the most important thing, just making Gretel and Hansel throw punches and, you know, break necks and arms left and right, and just, it should look like they've done it a thousand times before. The biggest challenge to shoot was probably the, the, the big witches' Sabbath, uh, where we have tons of witches, we have a troll, we have kids, we have Hansel and Gretel, and it's just a massive set, and it's a big climatic scene of the film, and it, just dealing with all those extras and makeup and touch-ups and, and 
kids regulations it was a, it was a challenging thing to to get a, to get in place but again us pushing to get as much as we could in camera i think really just helps the action Designing the witches was one of my favorite processes, actually, and, and just coming up with the designs of it. Be because we try to reinvent witches as a bad guy here, and not have the classical witch of stirring the pot, looking evil. We, we really try to go crazy here, and, and the witches' Sabbath at the end, we have 50 different witch looks. It was just tons of fun trying to come up with that stuff, and I think my favorite is probably there's a witch with a huge goiter coming out of her neck. <laughs> I don't know, I just, I just like, like the look of her. Peter Stormar, of course, I'm a Norwegian and he's a Swede, so <laughs> I always love his work. It was fu fun getting him in there and Thomas Mann. It, we needed a, a him for kind of a young, he's kind of the heart of the film in a way. He's the young, innocent guy who comes into this just as a big fanboy. And it's just, he, he just brings this good heartness to it all. And other than that, we just had a bunch of Scandinavian and German actors in the film. Uh, Pila Vidala, who plays Mina, the White Witch, someone we found in Germany. Uh, and it was just, Making the world feel European and real was important to us. I just think 3D can help in movies like this where it's about getting people to come into the world you, you're trying to create. So, so for us to, to uh, do 3D here was because we want people to really come into the fairy tale world that we're, we're creating. And of course, if you're doing 3D, you should also have fun with it, and we try to have fun with it, and we, we try to you know, be adventurous with the 3D. The fun part of combining the, the old stuff with the new stuff is just because it brings, it makes the world timeless, and we always try to aim for the, that term, timeless. We don't, we didn't want people to pinpoint us to a certain t period of time, and and also it, it just brings a lightheartedness to it all, uh, seeing these uh, modern elements suddenly in this fairy tale world, and somehow they feel natural, they feel like it could fit there, but it's at the same time it puts a smile on somebody's face, and it's, it helps with the tone of the film as well. They are rock stars. In addition to being really badass and cool and good at what they do, they also struggle with the fanboy. And you can see from Hansel's reactions that they encounter a lot of them. So, so it's it's just a, again a fun mix of worlds. I think. I think this story stay with me because it's so dark and it's so twisted. And I was pro you know I was very young when I heard uh, the cassette tape of this story uh, and, and and listening to the sound effects of the witch dying and screaming in the oven it just burned into my into my skull and it's just they're, they're gruesome stories and they 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 didn't hold anything back the the Grimm brothers in in writing these things so it's just a, a very basic stories about good and evil and if you do this well this will happen to you it's it's very simple but it's also very very cool and I, I and, but I think the darkness is why they stayed stayed for so long. I just hope people have fun. I mean, we, we really want to make a movie, a, a big, fun action movie, where people just go in to enjoy themselves. There's a lot of movies these days that are dark and serious, and they want to keep you down there, but we want, we want to get you up here and, and, and try to just, just have a blast, really.